88 Films. All right, guys, so today um, we have a special guest, someone who's been doing this sneaker thing for well over 20 years, from, like, his eBay store to Project Blitz to even supplying some of your favorite stores with great product. Um, we'd like to welcome Croatian Style. Dre, how you doing today? What's up, guys? How you doing? Yes, uh, yeah, it's been over 20 years. I've been doing this since I was nine years old. Jesus. <laughs> no, no, I'm just kidding. Like, <laughs> going, we can't really put our whole age out there like that. Look at this. He knows his good energy. Huh? Yeah. Oh, man. Um, how you feeling? Good, brother. Good, good, good. good. I mean, uh, I'm actually glad. I, like, I don't really get to to get around too much in the in our city, yeah. in the right. ciudad, Los Angeles. <laughs> yeah. But uh, you know, born and raised out here. I mean, I'm I'm happy. This is uh, definitely a, a big mecca of the the U.S. for sneakers. I mean, we've had the most the most stores open up here, and you know, and successful stores, and and prominent people have been moving here and. From other places in the country, right? So I mean, besides New York, I honestly think that this this became literally the mecca. Absolutely, no, yeah, definitely. So just just to kind of get into it, um, where exactly did you grow up in LA, and like when did you find that love for like sneakers? At what age? Man, it's crazy because uh, I mean, I could show you the I have pictures of me in '85 wearing a little Jordan thing when I'm in like in first grade. You know, it's kind of funny. It's like five years old, and. Um, you know, I grew up in the South Bay, um, city of Hawthorne. Yeah. Shout yeah, out to yeah. everybody that went to Hawthorne High. Everything out there. I know there's some people out there. But, um, yeah, so South Bay, I mean, it's L.A. County. It's definitely like the near uh, LAX. It's its own city, just like Inglewood or whatever. But um, it's definitely uh, part of the L.A. vibe. It's like, um, what's it called? So the love for sneakers and then, okay, so... To just kind of fast forward a little bit, um, when exactly was was the was like the collecting starting? At what age did you start like really getting into it? Where you're like, all right, I'm holding this, and you know things like that. Okay, so you know, the, basically, you know, growing up in that era, there was no, there was no resale. Yeah. There was no, of wasn't anything. It was kind of like athletes drove the shoes. So I mean, every, people would wear checkered Vans, paint splatter, Converse. Uh, Dion's, Bo Jackson's. Nobody wanted Air Force Ones on the West Coast. I mean, I didn't know anyone on the East Coast at the time. Apparently, that's what was big there. But nobody wanted retro on the West. On the West Coast, it was literally like, you know, Rod Woodson, Dion Sanders, whoever, uh, Andre Agassi, whoever had signature shoes. And it was the new one, the new Air Jordan. Right. If you had last year's Jordans on, last season... Mm -hmm. Man, you're weak. Yeah. It's about who got the new one that first day, who ditched class, who ditched, uh, you know, first period or whatever in high school and went out and got in line, got that shoe and then came back and then wore it. That that was it. Whoever had it that first day, you, that was like the, the roly of the thing. Yeah. That was like the roly of the school. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. It was about that. You could be wearing rags, but if you had that new air jordan that came out boom it was like damn everyone was like all over you it was great yeah. it's like that was the whole status symbol of of high school growing up and um so you kind of just wore your shoes right like yeah. i didn't grow up uh affluent um uh, no no offense to anyone that that had i mean you know my parents were very blue collar immigrants from from europe from croatia um and uh you know you kind of burned out one of your shoes. Yeah. You used to rub that sole out so you could be like, hey, I'm getting a, a hole in it. Like, I got a, I need a, a new one, right? But, you know, you, you kind of did odd end jobs here and there, mowing lawns, doing all this stuff just to get a, a few extra bucks. So you'd get one shoe every school year. Yeah. And then, you know, I tried to save up so I could get another one in the spring, or whatever, so you could kind of flex. But um, that, that was kind of, that was pretty much the, uh, the passion and where it started. Um, as far as collecting, um, so when Jordan re was retiring, I right, remember the last shot, the 14s were a little, already a little bit crazy, f like the, 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 the actual of, model yeah. of itself, things were kind of getting a little futuristic, right? Mm -hmm. So people were kind of over them a, l a little bit. The 13s were cool. They were big in the Latino community. Yeah. Everybody yeah. knows yeah. Flint, yeah. Flint 13s yeah. was yes. like the retro of most like Latinos. people that came up. Yeah. Latinos, yeah. mostly Mexicans, is yeah. really, like yeah. when I grew up. 
and uh, you know that 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 Flint thirteen yeah. still. You know, from like OG guys, you always ask, "Hey, do you still have one of those?" But you know, it's uh, it's kind of it's kind of interesting and funny that whole uh, dynamic. But after you know he retired, I remember I left um, school and I was just like, you know, I had all these other ones from before, and I was like, okay, I'll, I'll be wearing those or whatever. And then I was kind of off it until you know, ninety nine came. And I was in, um, I was actually in Europe with my, with my mom visiting family and I came back and my boy, uh, you know, Jay comes up and he's like, yo, they're bringing back the Jordan fives. And I was like, no, yeah. really? Like the, you know, the black silver with the, black with a reflective yeah. tongue. Yeah, yeah. And I was like, damn. And then all of a sudden, broop, I'm like going back in time, like, yo. I made the biggest mistake of my life. At the time, it was really cool, but I, um, you know, that was 1990, and I was gonna get the that black silver five, and instead the Reebok pump came out, and I was like, "Damn, that's crazy!" Like, you know, the, Reebok was was still was big that de back then. You know, you got D Brown, you had all these athletes like wearing them, Shaq or whatever. I mean, Shaq wasn't there yet, but. That, that first pump that came out was like white, neon, black. And I was like, okay, I'm just going to get the pump. And not to say I regret it all the time because I always had like all the schoolyard, yeah, all the kids would, be, would be like, hey, can I pump the shoes? And like girls, you know, girls did it. It was almost like they were, they were <laughs> making like, out with you. You know what I mean? It was like, you're just like, yeah, yeah, keep pumping that, keep pumping that. <laughs> but um, but that's, the, that's like the, the funny thing is you, as a kid, you find those like little those little things that, uh, you know, all of a sudden it was like, that was like the thing. Everyone wanted to pump your, pump the, the little Reebok yeah. pump. It was like this cool, fun gimmick or whatever. And then, um, so the fact that they were bringing back the fives, I was like, dude, yo, I need to get these. And, uh, but he, what he showed me was the, the retro card. You remember the retro yeah. cards? Yes, we do. Yes, sir. Well, the four. <laughs> So this was the end of 99, and then so and I was like, where'd you get this? He said, oh, the guy at Foot Locker just gave it to me. And I was like, damn, wait, wait but there's a four. And he's like, he's like, yeah, I, I guess they came out. Because we, you know, we had no way to, to under, know or understand, so we're like, yo, let's, let's go look for him. So we went literally Compton Indoor, Gardena Indoor, everywhere like around me in the hood to San Diego, to Slauson. That's where I like found everything. Went right. to like uh, Baldwin Hills Mall, went everywhere. Found a couple of those fours sitting around, not in my size. And I was like, man, I gotta get these. Cause you remember when they came out with those, the ones, twos and threes? Yeah. That's while Jordan was still playing. Mm -hmm. Nobody wanted them. Nobody cared. You brought back the Jordan one. All that stuff was at Marshall's that everyone kind of knows of, yeah. but literally, Nobody bought those. Nobody bought the ones, twos, and threes when they first came out. And then after the, these fours came out again, that's what it started. And then, so, sorry to make this such a long thing, yeah, but no, I figure please. you want to get some of those good details in Absolutely, it. Absolutely, yeah. The, um, uh, so we're going around everywhere looking for the fours. I couldn't find it anywhere. And here I am. You know, I find, uh, I just start going on the internet, find eBay in its infancy. You just search Air Jordan s shoes, and you have two pages. That's it. Jeez. Um, I was searching deeper, and I found Nike Park in its last, like, month, and then it just shut down. There was, like, Nike Talk. Um, and uh, then I found this guy. So this guy was on, um, on I, I can't remember if it was on eBay or, or Nike Talk, to tell you the truth, but you know, we went on AOL Instant Messenger, and we were, I was talking to him, and he's like, because those shoes were 99 99 plus tax. And I think tax at the time was like 7.5% or something like that. So it's less than 110 after everything, yeah. right? right? Crazy. Uh, like now that it like costs that much, like yeah. double. Right, right. That's kind of ridiculous. That thing is BS to me. It's like 225 now for a retro. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Air Force Ones were 64.99 back yeah. then. Lows, crazy. So um, the fact, then the guy had it. He had a, a, a size 10, and I was like, okay, cool. 
Like that, that's, I found all these other sizes. I found smaller ones. I found bigger ones, but I just couldn't find a 10 in anything. And I wasn't at that point where I was buying something to, to sell it. Right. Had no idea of it. And then um, this guy was like, oh, yeah, yeah, just give me uh, uh, like 125 in the shipping. And the shipping was like, you know, seven bucks yeah. or something like that. And I was like, I, I don't, it was like 20 bucks on top or something like that. Not even 20 bucks, like 18. And, uh, and I was like, well, they only cost 100 plus tax. So why don't I just give you the 100 plus tax? <laughs> and he's like, well, I bought them. So it's like getting a tip. Mm. Right? right and i'm and i'm i'm sitting here thinking like dude i'm a international business major and it's like the light bulb just hit right and i was like man how the why didn't even think of that like how come no no one really think of that everyone that was selling something it was just for a little bit more yeah mm -hmm. and i was like okay so you're just trying to make uh He's like, yeah, just like a, a tip. And I was like, did you buy them to... He's like, well, I was going to wear them, but then not anymore. But I figured, why not, right? So at that moment is when I, I said, okay, cool. I had to go buy that. And then I got a, um, a really small uh, credit card. It was like a $1,500 limit. I had my parents had to co-sign for it. Mm. And I said, <clears throat> listen, this is my plan. What I'm going to do is... I'm going to go buy five pairs and sell them for like 20, 25 bucks on top. And I'm going to make my next shoe free. That was my whole goal. Yeah. <laughs> get high off my own supply. Yeah. Just, just, I just want to get another free shoe. Yeah. Basically. That's it. It wasn't, it wasn't a, a dream of creating like a, a business or anything. It was just that, that was it. Simple. Yeah. My parents, God rest their souls, were like, what are you doing? You're going to get stuck. No <laughs> one's going to want to buy that. With da, 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 da. No one's going to pay this. I said, I just had to pay a f like 20 bucks more to get these. And right. I said, you're stupid. Why did you do that? <clears throat> so that's where it all started. I ended up, the, the next one came out and I bought um, five of them and sold them all for like uh, 20 bucks on top when, when the fives came out. Okay. So the fives came out, I sold those, and I basically got my pair for free. And it was the most gratifying thing ever. It's more gratifying than, than even selling some big shoe right now. That feeling then was so pure and natural, it was incredible. Right, that like first, that first shot. Exactly, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it was, it was like, man, I just got my, my pair for free. Yeah. So that was the whole driving force and where it started, and then it just all snowballed from there. But that's, I mean... You could go deeper in that if you want, but I'm sure you have other questions. Yeah, that's crazy that you said that. Like you went to all these other small like swap meets essentially to find the shoes because we used to do that too. Because when we got into shoes, it was like probably ninety nine, oh six, like seven seven years later, and then we started figuring out that there was like shoes before that, and so we were like, oh, let's go find them. And I remember going to like Bell Swap Meet, Compton, yeah, and all that stuff. And then I'll be like, mom and pop shops still had all the old retros that they couldn't sell, and obviously it was retail. And then so then you start con connecting with them, and that's when for us they would tell us like, oh, we're getting the next one next month because obviously there's no like at that point there's the internet, but we didn't really know what was coming out and stuff like that. So that's how we started finding out just because of the mom and pop stores, which is crazy because like the era that we're in now, these kids don't get that feeling of like knowing, like how you said, like, oh, I just wanted my shoe for free. Yeah. <laughs> no, I know. Yeah. It's, I mean, it, everything, everything changed at, at a, at a point. It all, it all kind of became about what something is worth Yeah. and not the, not the, like the design and the feeling and aspect of it. I mean, there's still, it still is out there. It's a little bit mixed, but you know, everything changes, you know, the, I mean, you can see that this store here is all about passion. And that's that's the beauty of it. You see the things that are hanging. You see the shoes that are like hanging just as a display, and that's that's love. You know what I mean? It's not right. like you see the people that as soon as things got a little rough, they shut down quick. Yeah, because right. they because they, they basically were you know the bubble, economic little bubble burst in that thing. So right. if they can't make themselves, um, you know, like some six figure. Um, salary for themselves, then they're just going to be out yeah. because they weren't really about it. And that's what you see, who's, yeah. who's where there's closing down and who's 
opening up. Yeah, exactly. Like or just like staying. I always I said it at the start of the year. It's like about staying afloat and being smart with your decisions. Because I feel like a lot of people just like buy into it too deep, and it's just like you never know. Like you can't forecast certain shoes anymore. Like before, you could a little. But then now I feel like the sneaker game is so like tricky. It's like worse than stocks. Like literally, like you you don't know. Oh yeah. Yeah. No, it's true. Yeah. So when you were getting these like five pairs of Jordans in '99, who were you selling to? Like eBay or like local or like? So I um, I started on on eBay, um, and first it was through a uh, like a a friend's account, and then I started my own, uh, and that's where the Croatian style. Uh, name came from it was on on eBay and I just started doing it myself I, I I'd sold like one to someone locally and then the other was just like Online. on eBay but yeah that was literally the the beginning I, w- I actually wanted to touch something have you been to Compton indoor when it was open it's gone now yeah but, I think he, it's funny because he took that? me there yeah. yeah so that place crazy story is legendary <clears throat> like they used to sell stuff a little bit early there and the price was a little bit higher yeah. you had to pay a little just a little bit extra but there's this one stall in there that had nothing but vintage the it was Cortez? crazy hmm? you remember like the old Cortez from like 92 like had a ton of older stuff no no I because you said you started in about 07 or so yeah so I think this place already got burnt uh oh four oh five but they had like, imagine if you had a corner of your store and it was just all, like, tech challenge, Agassiz, like, just everything you can imagine. Damn. And I would I would always go in there and be like, man, this place, it looks cool, mm. right? And you could buy one of these things, and it's no, it was normal price. It was pretty much normal price. Like, nothing was on sale. It was, like, retail. Okay. But some of them were, like, aged and all that stuff. And then one day, I literally walked in because I was like, okay, I want to... Maybe, you know, this was a couple years later and I was already like cranking and I kind of wanted to buy, buy like a bunch of them or most of it. Right. And I walk, I haven't been in, wasn't in in a few months. And I walk in, gone. Jeez. Gone. All gone. Now they had a bunch of like new crap. And I was oh. like, oh my God, what happened? Oh, someone came in, they bought it all. Crazy. I found out who it was. This guy in, uh, well, I can't confirm if it was, but this guy from the East Coast found out about it or told him about it. He flew in and bought it all. Shit. <laughs> it was crazy. Did they have, oh, like, damn, did they have, like, older Air Forces, too, or am I tripping? Like, or was I, it just, think, like, tech I, challenges, things like that? No, no, I mean, it, it was, like, Air Forces and stuff, too, but mm-hmm. you can, the, it was all the neon colors of the 90s. Oh. So it was wow. literally everything 90s. I just remember it was a bunch of, like, you know, Air Max 180s and, and you oh, know, wow. I mean, they probably had everything, like, Cortezes and all kinds of stuff. Right, but right, the thing right. that really caught my eye was all the neon stuff from the 90s, you know what I mean? Yeah. Damn. So... And that stuff was like, it still looked wearable or did it already? Because you mentioned it looked aged, like, or was it still, you think it was still wearable at that point? Oh, at that point, probably. Yeah. yeah. At that point, I, I, I'm pretty sure. Now, no. <laughs> no, yeah. no, definitely not. Um, uh, all right. So what's, so you said you mentioned, you're like, all right, now I got stuff cranking. So I would ask, how many years do you think it took for you to start actually like getting more and more stuff? Like, obviously it was more than five pairs. Like now we're talking in that like hundreds range like would you say it took you a couple years or a year how did that how did that go um off? it, it kind of it started happening really fast really because uh i was like there was there was no one doing it yeah so i literally went to every mall every store every you know everything out there there was no like there was no undefeated there was no boutiques there was no sneaker shops there was you know footland in the yeah. right here in, yeah. in little the tokyo, tokyo in the village there was um just those mom and pops jump in hawthorne it was a <clears throat> amazing uh place amazing owners uh those were like the and those it was korean owned there was a lot of old like korean spots that used to own a lot of these uh stores and they're the ones that really built nike up in the in the, all the like urban areas oh for sure around la and east coast chicago like everywhere it was like you know, I can remember probably half of them were probably all Korean, to tell you the truth. Right. It was like a, I mean, even in Lakewood, there was one. I can't remember all the names, but there right. was, you know. Yeah. So you were building relationships with them and that's how you were getting stuff? Um, yeah, you know, like they would, things weren't really, things weren't selling out, mm-hmm. you know, at that time. So, you know, if they had a few pairs left, they'd be like, okay, cool, I'll, I'll take them. 
no problem, no big deal. There was nothing against it. Yeah. Um, it was literally help, helping out the, the stores. And I just started building up this, this eBay. And, you know, just a little bit, little bit here and there. And then on Nike Talk is when things started expanding because that was connecting people globally, just like Instagram well, you, and all that now. What year is this, is this happening at that Nike Talk? 2000. 2000. Yeah. Okay. Like literally that same year when all that happened, this just started building up. And then I started, uh, you know, getting the foot action. Dunks were only at foot action, mm -hmm. but they were huge in Japan. So me having the size run up on eBay, all these Japanese dudes were hitting me up like, oh, please, can we, I want to buy everything you have. <laughs> and I wasn't really getting too much at that time. But, you know, I was dealing with someone that was uh, actually living here, but they had a store over there. And um, so he would buy those. And then one day I was I was going to look at the uh, Japanese magazines. You know, they used to sell them at the, you know, the stores. And you can see all these crazy cool colors of uh, different like dunks and Air Force Ones that you don't you don't see in the U.S. And I was like, dude, I need to get these. These are crazy. And uh, and then I saw an advertisement and I was like, man, that ad looks exactly like the name of the store, L.A. Avenue, of the email of the guy. Yeah. Wow. That I was, you know, emailing with. Oh, wow. And I looked at the shoes at what he was selling them for. And I was like, oh, my God. <laughs> Are you kidding me? He's, he didn't want these for himself. <laughs> well, I knew I knew he was selling <laughs> it in, in his store. But the, but it was crazy. Like, literally, I was I was buying the shoes for 65 after everything or something like that. And selling it to him for 95. And he's selling them for 250. Shit. Jesus. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh my lord! That so much. I told him I was like, "Hey, <laughs> the next I, I, next time I saw him, I said, hey, look.' But but that was the Amer that was was in America. You yeah. can't like tell the guy, "Hey, man, I'm gonna you can't you got to pay me more because he could just go buy them from somewhere else." Yeah. Right, right. But yeah. I had things on lock already, so. Uh, but I I gave him a an incentive. I said, "Look, you sell out pretty fast, right?" And he goes, "Yeah." I said, "Well, why don't you get more?" Oh, I, I don't have no way to, to do that. But I would. And I said, okay, well, how about this? If you pay me more, I'll get you more. <laughs> so that was like the first major deal that I did. And uh, like I, I ran around everywhere, took care of somebody, and they connected a lot. Okay. And uh, <laughs> put together, I don't know what it was, maybe a, a hundred of them or something like that. Of like Jeez. a patent low um, dunk. Okay. Something like that. And and I just told him, I said, okay, cool. Look, you pay me, I don't know what it was, 140. It was, it was definitely more than double, 140, right. 150. And then, you know, you, you can sell them for, for more. And he's selling them for like double whatever the amount was, you know. Right. And he said, okay, I like you. You're smart, you know. <laughs> and this was, let, this was Kai it. from Eliav at this point? Yeah, it was. <laughs> that's nice. crazy. Yeah. yeah, that's a great. That's a crazy story. Yeah. Love and, hearing uh, names and, and things like that. Just being able to really touch back on those things. Yeah, I mean that's that's literally how I learned uh, sushi. I started learning Japanese. I started, you know, literally it was because of that. That was like the first one, and then it just started uh, opening up. Or others were contacting me because um, that really started blowing up in Japan, which was like the mecca at the time. Yeah. Right. Crazy. So Japan was like what China was to us a few years ago yeah. mm -hmm. that was japan in the late 90s and and you know the like pre-2010 it was huge there like the whole sneaker game is insane so imagine you get that first wire in and you know dad's tripping oh this is these are scammers they're gonna they're gonna <laughs> they're gonna fuck you up they're gonna reverse it and all this stuff right typical you know eastern european Parents um, looking out for you, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know, but it's—I mean, it's funny. You, you can't—you can't prove anything to them. So, yeah. <laughs> but the—the the cool thing is that that was that was literally the start of something, and it was—it um, was like uh, amazing. I went out there, and then I started like buying a ton, and uh, then I met, you know, guys from East Coast. Uh, there was um, Vintage Kicks, and that ended up being uh, Demani, who ended up founding flight club and so he was like the east coast of of me yeah and so we were both starting now uh getting all of the um the japanese exclusive stuff 
and then I was bringing it here for like eBay and and Nike Talk and all that, and that's how that whole game started. Damn. Yeah, that's crazy how like a small connection you made ended up being like so much bigger. So pretty much you bring you're selling U.S. exclusive stuff. So then Japan and you're getting Japan exclusive stuff and bringing it here. Yeah, that's like to me that's insane. No, I, I know. I, and at this point, did you have a job or you're just essentially doing that? No, I was going to school. Oh, just and so I started taking less class because I was, I was supposed to uh, originally want to be an architect, switch to finance. That's what I was going to school for. I was going to go to SC, Marshall School of Business. And I was going to El Camino College. And then I transferred to SMC because I heard there was like hotter girls there. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> and uh, plus, I was just killing a little bit of time. Yeah. Because right. I, I knew if I go to SC, it's going to like, change the game like i have to like really bust my ass there i'm not gonna be able to do this right. i was doing it on the side but i was dragging along along yeah. a little bit then i had this um experience with a like a, a teacher there that kind of pulled me aside it's kind of like a little spiritual thing but uh asked me if i wanted to if i if it's okay if it's okay i stayed after class and i thought man did he catch me like looking at someone's looking over when I was at a test or something <laughs> like that. I mean, I have wandering eyes, but it's, it's, it's really kind of like, okay, I was just checking it. Like, am I getting the right answer or something like that? Not really cheating or condoning that. So don't, <laughs> but, um, he actually pulled me aside and was like, Hey, can I, uh, can I speak to you about God and things like that? And I was like, yeah, go ahead. He started telling me the story about a student that was there that was supposed to go to SC, didn't end up going and his dad had cancer. And so he ended up going to Long Beach and staying at home and had the best time, the best time of his life with his father before he passed away. And the crazy thing was that resonated with me because my mom had cancer at that time. And I was and it was like, uh, oh, my God, are you telling me my mom's going to die? Like, I was literally stunned here that this guy was telling me this stuff. Right. But uh, he was just telling me I, I just felt like I had I had to tell you this. So. um it was a, uh, it, you know, he, it was kind of like saying that you're on, you're on the right path. So don't worry about, it was kind of like, it was kind of like that. Mm -hmm. Like, don't worry about, uh, you know, you're on the right path. So just don't hesitate kind of, you know what I mean? Right, yeah. Right. And at that, at that point I knew there was something, there was something about where, where I was going to be and, and what, and it wasn't based on what you think that you needed to be. Right. Right. And then the, then after like uh, a co you know, another year and a half, I, ha I made the decision to leave school and pursue the, the business. And uh, yeah. That's so. Insane. So you went full in on essentially Croatian stuff at that point. At that point. Right. Yeah. yeah. I didn't start uh, Project Blitz, Blitz yet. Till way later. So it was just yeah. it was just eBay and work from home, essentially. Well, I mean, I was also like supplying like stores yeah so we were doing a lot of trading with uh i was doing a lot with uh d from flight club yeah. i was um you know at that time there was like sneaker pimp in in um in new york yeah joe uh a lot of these guys were doing these little you know just smaller deals but you're you know you're you're making those maneuvers and then um you know little by little later uh things opened up here like the gray one opened in pasadena yeah. that was the first boutique uh, account it was like before undefeated um, and I actually was their buyer and I was helping them do the ordering and and all that stuff in uh, in Pasadena shout out to the old gray one crew out there yeah, that's sick mm -hmm. I did, definitely didn't know that that's you didn't know that no. did you remember did you remember gray one yeah yes. I remember when we first got <laughs> into like sneakers and stuff like that that was like a, st a store that everybody's like you guys gotta go there check it out oh, yeah yeah, yeah. Because there wasn't, there wasn't so many. So people would like tell us, go here, go here, go here, and pretty much figure it out. And that's just literally what happened. You know what the, the most amazing thing, uh, that something that we, we did there or had there that like, do you remember the Invisible Woman Air Force One? Yeah. I can't say like how it happened, <laughs> but literally, do you remember it was crazy? Yeah. Those clear, those clear uh, Air Force Ones. Um, so everyone got like, I don't know, some people only got eight pairs, 12 pairs, something like that. Nike Town got like their, uh, some little amount too. We had more than anyone. <laughs> it was crazy. <laughs> Literally insane. 
Crazy. Line. I think I think it was over a hundred a hundred uh, pairs. Oh, Nike wow. Town didn't even have that because we confirmed it with someone there, and so it was kind of it was a really a big kind of like a big moment uh, for us, and it was just because there was a little bit of a there was something in the system, but it, it, but it was really uh, it was something that was really cool. It was really amazing. There was a lot of energy, a lot of people like running in, and it was uh, it was cool. That was like a just a memory that popped up from the gray one days. <laughs> That's dope. Uh, and how long were you there for? Um, I mean, it's like I was part of the crew. I had my own thing. I was really just just helping, but I was literally doing the buying for for a, um, a couple years, and then it kind of had you know more people come in and more, that would to be there on the daily, and then I just kind of like consulted and assisted in other ways. But um, but yeah. All right. So around this time, like, what's so before we head into like I guess like the the Paris story like what's what's hot like is it Pro Bs is it Ten of Air Forces for the people that don't know obviously we have a lot of young viewers like what's hot in that right before that Paris SB like hype and the whole thing well I mean just when the SBs came out in the beginning it was insane you know like uh, there was you know the Supas the Molders the uh, Gino Inanucci the ones and um, uh, the uh, which one am I missing? Reese Forbes, the wheat color, yeah. right? So when the SBs first came out, that was like the 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 biggest deal. Jordans were already like cracking at the time, like O one, you know, cool grays, you know, Space Jams came out for the first time ever. Yeah. Um, and uh, you know, the Elevens were huge at that time. Uh, there was like the Air Force One started come out with Puerto Rico, the Puerto Rico collabs. Uh, the, the Lakers, man, do you remember the first yeah. uh, Lakers Air Force Ones? Yeah. yeah Dude, yeah. I was going around every single little, like, warehouse shoe sale and, and like, Damn. like hood spot, and they were just, like, sitting there. The and I was just buying them, and Japan loved them. They are eating them up. There was, like, it was, like, gold bars sitting yeah. at the at the spot, <laughs> you know? And, uh, I mean, that was, like, that that whole era. It was, like, all those, all those little collabs that had a little logo on the heel. Yeah. Was that like was, it? like, that was it. And then SBs came out like O2, and um, and then that's when just everything started expanding and cranking. Um, I think the f the first like brand collab that was uh, that was m like the first hype, the first craze was the Stussy Dunk High. Remember the brown? It's like British tan and khaki, and the yeah. other one was black with a snakeskin and, and gray were, laces. And they were regular dunks, not SBs. Dunk highs, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah regular yeah. dunks. I remember those. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <clears throat> those were actually like the first. Uh, I'm pretty sure like the first collabs that were, that were kind of big at that moment. Yeah, before mm -hmm. SB. Yeah. Before SB. And then like like I said, Foot Action had all the dunks. Then Stussy came out with those, and then they started uh, making dunks for all the like boutiques and stuff. Nice. That's crazy. That's it's literally insane. Like it, it's crazy hearing these stories because then when I we got into it and we started deep diving into like 99 2000 2001 we were just like what the fuck like th this is crazy but we already had like social media so that's how we were looking and i remember when we found out about your ebay account we're like yo bro this fucking dude has everything like how the fuck does he do it <laughs> <laughs> and and your prices were like for for us at that moment we're like yo they're great like they're yeah. he's not taxing and obviously we didn't have all the money in the world so we were just like yo like this guy's good i don't think i ever bought anything from you but it was just more of like eye candy just like going through your ebay and being like what the fuck Dude, i'm glad you just said that yeah. uh, you, literally i'm glad you just said that because the whole purpose of the way that when i st when we launched uh, project blitz um projectblitz.com uh, <laughs> like, you know, shameless plug yes, sir. Um, yes, sir. you know when we when we launched that it was literally i wanted to make it everyone's like no you can't do a black site you can't you can't do that it's not gonna i said listen i know photography it's we're going to make this all about the shoe itself. And I want it to be like a eye candy, yeah. like a catalog, yeah. like a, a literally like a, you know, uh, a, a museum yeah. where you could just go in and look. And even if you're not shopping, you're going to look at the colors, look at the models and see stuff you're not going to see anywhere else. Facts. You know, yeah. like Flight Club had a good yeah. selection at the time. Uh, but, you know, when we launched it, too, we had like a like a very deep array of things that you couldn't find anywhere. No, yeah, because even for us, when being like this 06, 07, we, were, uh, we would go to Flight Club, put 
most expensive and just be like, oh my God. And this, at this time, like pigeon dunks were only like $800, $700. But we, for, to us at that point, we're like, bro, we're never getting those shoes ever in our lifetime. Yeah. Like at all. So we would literally just put most expensive and just look and just be like, damn. And then sometimes take pictures of it and put it on like our MySpace just because like, oh, it's our dream shoe, but we mm-hmm. couldn't afford it. But yeah, even I remember when you launched Project Blitz, I was just impressed about like how the pictures were taken and like how to me it just reminded me i'm like yo this is a sick ass website because yeah, that's thank what, you. that that's what it was it just for me I, like nostalgia is a big thing so me getting taken back to like 06 07 i was just like this is sick thank you yeah yeah i know that was that was that was literally the the main purpose of it was to make it just about the the shoe itself yeah. not the site that's why it was just dark it was kind of like remember when the lakers you go to a Laker game, they start shutting off the lights around the crowd. Yeah. Mm-hmm. They made it about the the game. They made it about the game, about mm-hmm. the floor. And right. that's what I what I did. I just made it about the the what's the pieces, you know? So we're um to 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 spring back a little bit, um the Paris dunk. So tell us a little bit about that as much as you can, obviously. Like obviously we've all seen the picture, right? We've all mm-hmm. you know, a million times and we're like, you know, I was even counting it today. I was like, is it like 25, 30 pairs? Like, it was, I didn't know it was 33 in the, in the original picks. Okay. The, you know, the crazy thing is I'm trying to find those original picks on some old hard drives and I can't get it. I can only get the ones that are tagged with like my old AOL on it and things like that. And they were minimized, but I wanted yeah. to find those original, you know, the, the actual big pick of it, but, uh, it, you know, it's hard, mm-hmm. but yeah. So <clears throat> I ended up, uh, I, when I first saw that that was coming in, I said, man, this is the craziest thing I've ever seen in my life. Like, I think this is going to be the biggest shoe ever. And uh, I just felt it felt so much about it. I thought it was going to be um, epic, like just beyond anything. And um, I decided to do something really like a maneuver of like kind of cornering the market. But I want, but it was literally just I wanted to get all of it I could. Right. Right. And um, and so that's what I did. And I had to actually go back to my, my parents and say, hey, look, you see all this that's going on. And I have like this stock of, uh, you know, at that time, I probably had maybe like uh, already it's been a couple three years or so in. And I have, uh, you know, a little fifty thousand dollar collection of my own, wow. you know, that I that I kind of, you know, made in. And then I had maybe another probably another 50 or so in inventory. I can't really even recall it, maybe more or less right and uh and i said okay i will sell everything to cover this but i want to go in with with this this is like the i think this was this was like a make it or break it point for me it's either this works and i continue or it doesn't and sometimes you have to do these things right. you know you have to like uh say okay if it doesn't pop at this point okay i'm, I'm just gonna cut my losses and be out or uh, or like I move forward because things were like evolving. They were getting bigger. They were changing, and I said this this has to be the one. So I used uh, I got all these other credit cards. Had them open up some. I needed to pull like you know thirty five G's or whatever together. Right. And at, at that time, that's that's a lot. Yeah. You know what I mean? Especially to like a you know you tell your parents something like that, and they're like you know like are you crazy? This is like that's you know. Uh, almost a whole year's pay or something like that you know how can you you know you're gonna gamble like this and i said no no look i have this i'm gonna i'm gonna sell these through by the time it's due we'll we'll get it paid so anyways i went out um i already had some some things going out in in europe and people in in france and uh um i saw everything every pair that popped up on ebay i bought like I, I made a deal with them outside of it, just bought it for less and this one and that one and this and that. Every single one that popped up there popped up anywhere. And then, um, you know, going out to, you know, in Paris, they released, th- they they gave away like 50 pairs or something like that at, um, at some event. Wow. It was like his pre-party of, it wasn't, I can't even recall if it was White Dunk or something like that. I didn't go to it, but it, there was, I saw the shoes mm-hmm. and these, these French dudes, they didn't give a shit. They didn't give a fuck at all. They were like, fuck these Nikes, this shit, to, you know, like, <laughs> doing, and they, they were literally tying them up and they were throwing them on the, on the, on the fucking, on the tele, on the, you know, the phone lines and electric oh, lines. No way. Yeah. Just throwing them up, you know, tying the laces, throwing them up. <laughs> 
Usually in college, that means that people are, are fucking there or something like that. That was like That's the good. old OG like thing. You know, you know how you got them laced up right there on the pipe. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> so that was that was literally what the um, that whole. That's what they were doing. They were just to- people were tossing them up, throwing away the box, launching them up. Imagine Damn. that. And but but shoes weren't going for anything at the time. And then those like. They were going for like 700, 650, eight. And I was sitting there like trying to have to, and I was like, damn, dude, I'm running out of money fast. Like these things are like Pricey. pretty, yeah. pretty expensive. Right. But I just wanted to hit it right away because there was no shoe that ever entered the market at that price before. Yeah. Even Zoo Yorks or, you know, Supreme Dunk Lows. Right. You know, they're like 300 and that was craze yeah. at the time. You know I mean? It's a $65 shoe for 300 bucks. Jeez. You know? And then these, the same thing. It was like, what, uh, $69.99. Original retail, 70 euros or whatever. I think one of the pairs I still has has the old uh, euro tag on it. I got to check. But imagine that. So I worked out some deals, some... People saw like how much they were going for, and nobody wanted to buy. Nobody, there was no one in line anywhere. There was like a couple people. Damn. There was literally no one. There was only a couple places that had it, and they had all the whole stock. So, no one else is there. Yeah. What do you got? Uh, you know, it was it was like a whole little. It was a whole deal, but um, some other guys, some other players had them, and I just worked it out with all of them. I made myself a little list and I used up everything I had. I even had to, you know, get a little extra money. And then I came back, you know, I was putting it all together, um, shipped every, uh, a lot of stuff. And then, you know, guys in Canada, uh, there was some guy in Canada that had like four of them. I had to buy them all off them. I had to get them off eBay. <laughs> I had to get them everything off the, off the market. And so because we were dealing with LA Avenue, I was like, okay, my whole thing was I'm going to get these. And then slowly sell them in Japan, just no, you know, on just under the radar, make like, you know, two, three hundred bucks on each. All good, right? And then uh some guy goes, this guy that was from from France, he, and he was also selling at that store. He dropped um he dropped a bunch of like a five of six of those pairs off, like a mini size run. Mm. And bought them out the market. He was selling them for, it was like 800 something. And I was like, damn it. He ruined like he, it. He ruined it. <laughs> ruined the whole plan. And I was yeah. like, now I was sweating. I was sweating. <laughs> but I was like, dude, I don't have any, I don't have any more money. I ended up buying like a uh, two sizes but just to fill fill it up. Mm-hmm. And uh and so it would I knew it would spark it. Like people saw that two sold real quick, they'll buy the other ones. No one bought the other ones. Jesus. And I was like, how is this in Japan that no one's paying for those? Right. Right? Um, then after, you know, now as a month is coming through, I call my friends up. One of my good friends, Tan in New York, he's going to laugh about this one, but I always, I always say it. He's like, I was like, yo, um, do you want one of these shoes? I have 11 and a half. And he's like, I was like, how much is it? It's on my, you know, a list. I have how much I paid for every single one. I said, oh, I mean, this one is... 800 if you want it Jesus. dude 800 no i can't i don't want to pay that <laughs> and i was like all right and i was asking everybody you want them no nobody wanted it and i was like dude did i just totally like fuck myself big time right now i got a bill due coming in a couple of weeks um so i started selling all my other stuff because i was like i don't care i believe in these this is the most beautiful thing i ever seen right. plus i loved art my dad he knew the artist oh, everything yeah, yeah, he had all these art books and stuff. He was like a eclectic kind of wild guy. He loved wow, all that, that stuff. Yeah. Okay. So uh, then I was, I, I said, okay, someone bought a couple, uh, two pairs sold in Japan, and there was like two left. And I said, all right, cool. Like that's that, that'll just be it. Uh, I think I think it'll be f- fine. But uh, I just got to do something to. Nobody's talking about it. Nobody cared anymore. And that's when I went outside and took these pictures because i was already doing these group shots yeah and kind of like putting shit together and you know that was that used to create hype so i said i hope this is gonna blow shit up right so we were like putting it all out and i was making these doing these different shots different angles showing them how they're all different all the patterns are different 
Every Each single shoe. shoe is unique. Um, and then I just made this Nike Talk post and put all the pics up and boom, 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 boom comments. Everything just went, started going crazy. <laughs> Insane. Started going crazy. Even had someone on, on there tr that was like kind of, I guess, salty that their, that their shine was being, uh, I don't know, it had nothing to do with me, but like, and they were like on there like, like talking, talking shit or something like that. It was really it's odd, but it's an odd character anyway. And then, uh, so, uh, shit, where was that? Okay. So I took all the pictures and then I, uh, that's what I wrote. Like I'm starting this eBay, eBay, um, page for it. And then I did the same thing on the eBay, but I put all the sizes written on it. Mm -hmm. I said, if you, when you hit this, you can choose one of these sizes and then every time it sells, the price goes up 200 or something like that. So we start out at 1250 and then, um, and this was like literally a couple days after, remember I told my friend about like, yo, do you want it? Whatever. Boom, it hits. Everyone starts talking about it. This first time Dunk ever went over like a thousand bucks. So I restarted the, the listing and jumped up all the prices. Like, you know, started doing different price for the different sizes too a little bit and i said you get if you when you get this one and if you want any of the other sizes just contact me directly they're they're this guess who calls me first dude you still have that uh that 11 and a half <laughs> <laughs> and i was like oh oh you want it now why oh you know i was just thinking about it. i was like man you know like you know, they look really dope uh, and and do you, you still have it and i was like you just saw it sell, huh? And he's like, no, no, yeah, yeah, I just saw it sell, but oh, now you want it because now you see the, the value in it. Nah, forget, I'm sorry. You had your chance, everybody had your chance, like that's it, that's it. And then from there, that's when like a lot of craziness started going on and like people were going nuts about that shoe. And then they announced that there's gonna be the, um, well, the London one I think already was was coming out and the, the Tokyo, but the uh, the New York one, and that's when you know people knew they would come out, go out to go get that pigeon. It's like a lottery ticket. Yeah, you go pay 150 bucks, you're gonna come out with an extra thousand in your pocket, automatic. Yes. Right. First time in history in the U.S. that that uh, that that actually was gonna happen. You think you you um, contributed to like that SB hype to really just like amp it up to what it was? I, I think I think definitely like part. I think definitely part of it. Definitely sure. part of it. I mean, there's there's obviously like a, lo a lot of other people that have also involved in in that uh, on that side of things that have right. that have their own space in it. Like uh, you know, Nikki Diamonds for sure coming out with the the Tiffany that was huge. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I think that I I was the one that kind of drove the hype on really because everyone saw what that shoe was. But I think it was the way the the pictures were done. That created this whole, that created that whole like drive for it. Like, oh shit, they're actually all unique. Mm -hmm. Wow, somebody put them all together, and nobody was doing it at the time. And um, and then kind of like driving the price up. I think that 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 got like those kind of guys like really psyched into that. And that's what happened. And then uh, I think it was like the fourth shoe sold at uh, two thousand. And then that was like. Is big. that when you cut it off? You're like, I'm not selling anymore. Or you kept going? No, no, no. We, 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 we kept going, but it was, <laughs> but it was like a lot slower. I traded one, mm -hmm. I traded one pair for uh, the Kobe, the Kobe Lakers game worn Jordan Eight that I had. Oh shit! Jeez. Which was a crazy trade at the time. I mean, uh, at the time it was pretty equal. Like that shoe was probably worth two, two thousand bucks at the time too. Twenty five hundred, same is, as, same as the Paris. Is that one signed that Kobe Eight? Yeah. Man. Now it's, you know, especially because he passed is. It's worth way more, but the pair still go, went up that, yeah. you know, I itself remember we, to like 100 Gs. I remember we had a 10 and a half at Riff for like 5,000. Remember? Yeah. Forever, yeah. bro. Sitting. I remember yeah. I was just like, that shoe's never going to sell. Yeah. Like, that's just too expensive. This is like when Undefeated 4s were like... 2,500. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Like, it was just a different time. We were like, yeah. when we first got into like Riff, it was just like we, we had all these grails right there. And it were to us they were overpriced. I remember I don't know you know Frankie Dulay, 
Yes. Yeah. He, I remember that name. How yeah. could you not? How could you never? <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yes. yes sir. He would offer us like the craziest shit for like decent prices for whatever the market was. But for us, we're we're like in our early twenties. We're making what like twelve dollars an hour. Yeah. Um, I remember Frankie um offered us like pigeons for. He was like, "Yeah, man, take them for eight hundred dollars." <laughs> and we we're just like, "I can't afford that, bro. What is your problem?" And I remember. We literally just offer us shoes uh, undefeated. He's just like, yeah, man, take this one for two. He's like, pay it off whenever you want. Mm -hmm. And we would all be like, nope, we're good. I'm not going to get in debt with you. Yeah. <laughs> oh, wait. Not for $2,000. Yeah. Like so, his worn pair, right? Yeah. His always. Board. Literally every day. He's just like, hey, man, you're ready to buy a big boy shoe? Blah, blah, blah. <laughs> and I'm just like, and I remember the same thing. He would be like, bro, just fucking buy it. What is your problem? And I'm like, no. And I couldn't fit in 11. But, but it, do you ever trip out like when you saw it sell for 100 a hundred grand like that paris like do you ever Bro, just, like, I, I tripped out when i when when uh when we first opened blitz uh i think we put them up at five or six thousand uh and we got that that first that sale mm -hmm. and you know sbs were were pretty much dead yeah. at the time nobody cared you know yeah you it, sold one and at the, i think i had like 10 uh that were we saw had ten in stock over there, but I had a ton of what the dunks and all yeah. kinds of stuff. What the dunks for three three thousand bucks, twenty five hundred or something like that, you know? Yeah. Um, but yeah, when uh, when that whole like SB thing happened, like after we did the ramp and all this other stuff, and getting a Trav and everyone else, that, that was like crazy. Yeah. And seeing how everything just started going up big time, it was just because it was but it was a it was a bunch of uh, people that never knew about that about SBs and about dunks and they just all jumped on it and there's barely anything out there. It's like everyone's going out for like rookie cards. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Right. And and that's that's what it was. So that's pretty much like why it like went up so high. I think it was crazy. Crazy time and Yeah, cuz that at that market I remember SBs were dead cuz uh you know you probably know him too, Paul from uh, Australia. Yeah. Yeah, he was telling us this crazy story of how he obtained the PlayStation Travis Scott dunk. And he was just telling me he found this old guy. He had a storage. Uh, I got to, uh, like, ask him for the story again. But he was just like, yeah, like, he had, he, they wanted sea crystals. Like, basic, I would say pretty, like, basic mid-level SBs. And they were just, like, they were deep diving into the past. And they are like, yo, let's do a trade for this Travis. And he was just like, all right, cool. It wasn't his size, but he was just like, all right, fuck it. I'm going to just do it just to do it. Mm -hmm. But it, it just always, like, again, it's just, like, deep diving into the past and finding out. And I remember when... Um, we were we were at New York and we were guessing what Travis was gonna wear next because Travis was essentially fucking up the market like mm. he, like shooting it up like he'd wear a shoe, a couple hundred dollars more and I remember I told him I'm like yo I need to get what the dunks for like twelve hundred dollars because I feel like Travis is on this run right now he's gonna wear what the dunks and he's gonna be like ten thousand yeah and I got uh I got a pair on gold and then I got a DS pair from Netmag and I think the DS pair I paid two and the used pair I paid fifteen. And then literally a month later, Travis wore them, and I was just like, bro, what the fuck? Bro, trust me. I wish <laughs> I wish I had a little bit extra because I already I knew what was going to go down, and we were there, like, you know, looking through it. And I was like, yeah, slow down. Do do some of these first. Slow down. Literally. Yeah. Don't don't go to don't go to this yet yeah. and create so create down. the little. Yeah. Yeah. He's like, where are your Stussy SBs? Yeah. Like. Well. And then, but it, it was like the the jugular hit. It was the it was like yeah. The, what the, what the dunk? It was literally on like on the third on the third uh, shopping day, and uh, <clears throat> and I was like literally calling in everything because I was like you know I, I was all I'm all in on that. I don't have to like weed money, cannabis dudes or any kind of shit like you know Chinese money or nothing like that was like <laughs> running through running through our veins over there. We were yeah. literally just all homegrown, yeah. right. you know. And I was did, making calls. Then I was like literally making calls. And I said, dude, somebody put, somebody throw us a milli real quick. Because, you, you know, if I already know what's going to go down. If we could go out and buy all those things, like they're literally going to quadruple or or more, right? But, uh, yeah, it didn't happen in, in time. It wasn't fast enough. And then there you go. You yeah. saw what happened. Yeah. And <laughs> insane. <laughs> yeah, literally literally insane that market just the way it <sighs> shot up and and then when he started touching like random pro bees that like nobody mm -hmm. ever cared for just putting them on seven hundred dollars eight hundred dollars so you, know, you know what the funny thing is stone mazes yeah, yeah. you know remember those yeah, brown yeah, which, how much do those go for 
Now? Yeah. Yes. The brown with the light brown? Yeah. Where is that guy? <laughs> he, he comes here pretty often. Really? Shout out to, shout out to Frankie. Shout out Frankie. Tell him to holler at your old boy over here. Yeah, we sold it for he can uh, uh, from him when we first opened. That was the only person we took consignment from. Yes, because like, yeah, we were yeah. like, "Oh, it's our homie. Oh, okay. We trust him." Yeah, yeah. Uh, he when we first opened the store, I think he made like a quick fifty piece from us, My just because he brought like these crazy grails. Yeah. But people were buying stuff like that, like stuff you've never seen. But it was all because like the Travis effect, and we were just like, "Bro, what the fuck?" Crazy, right? Yeah. But you know, you know what those those stone mesas were? My old 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 used pair. Oh, I just wow. gave, I gave it to him. You were oh, just like, wow. oh, here you can have it. Because he's a 10 and a half, 11, right? Yeah, it was my size. And he, okay. he's, he saw him. I was like, yo, that's actually my used part. He's like, no, these are hard. <laughs> and I was like, I was like, yeah. I was like, here, <laughs> go. I'll, I'll give them to you. I love those too. Those are like one of my one of my like favorite ones. Oh. But I when I then I saw that right away and I was like, yo, we got to find as many of these right now as you can because they're like you could get them for a hundred bucks. Yeah, like Damn. nobody cared mm -hmm. about that. And then we just went and got like four of them, and then boom, they just shot up like, like crazy. You wore them like a couple of weeks later, or at least in a, in a pick was a, uh, was on a pick a couple of weeks later. Yeah, but it was, it was really it was funny that uh, that move. But it you know, it's really cool and it's crazy to see like you know how athletes used to drive stuff back then. Mm -hmm. Now it's just like entertainers. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, because I even remember I started tripping out when, like, um, you remember uh, Journeys used to have, like, kind of exclusive colorways that they would get, too? Like, the ones with, like, Tweed and all that stuff. And I remember I started seeing them on GOAT for, like, five, seven hundred dollars And it was just people waiting for, like, Travis to pull the trigger at this point on buying that one and wearing it to shoot up. But it was shoes that were, like, worth sixty, eighty dollars mm Mm-hmm. And I remember we would go. I remember we would go to Journeys and just be like, "Man, these don't suck." Like, Dude, that's crazy. I told, man, I, I forgot about that. Yeah, I forgot about that. They used to have like, their, like remember like yeah. the yellow, green, and red one. Like with it was mostly black though, black suede. Like that was like one of the ones. Yeah, that I think yeah, like, it's like the Rasta looking one. Yeah. I remember yeah. the only cool ones that we would buy from Journeys was like the JPEG, JPEG dunks, the Jordans, mm -hmm. the, the Jordan dunks, the regular yeah. ones. Because mm -hmm. I were like, "Oh, these are cool because they're like Jordans but dunks." Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. But even all the random colorways we were just like we were literally just tripping because we kind of were there when we would go into the store and be like oh these suck i mm -hmm. don't want these and then now everybody wanted them yeah was so. there ever a time when travis was inside the project blitz uh warehouse where you were like yo fuck don't show him this or don't show him that like i don't <laughs> want him to take everything because i think sometimes we uh, bris for sure will have this thing where we're like we'll have something and even dc where we have something we're like we don't want to see it go right away. Like, we don't mind having that shit to, like, yeah. you know, chill in the glass case for a little bit. Like, is there ever moments where you're like, nah, you, you probably can't show them this. Like, um, this. yeah, I mean, there was, <laughs> I mean, I, I had a lot of, a lot, I had a stuff, you know, stashed at home too, but the, I'm, I mean, no, nah, he was, he was cool. Mm -hmm. You know, he, it's not like he'll, he'll go in and buy like a, a ton at, at once. It's more like, you know, a couple here and there, and then oh, he'll okay. like enjoy those. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, want to go get something else. Okay. There was other guys that would come in and they want to buy like, you know, 50, 100 pairs at once, but that, it kind of, that wasn't him. Yeah. But I think it, it was good and it was smart because, you know, he wore them a lot. Yeah. You know what I mean? So he'd right. get something and just like wear it a lot and then like people would all like see like a bunch of different looks in it. Mm. And I think that's what, you know, made it, uh, made it really pop too. Um, 2015, we fast forward a little bit. We, um, we see you do Known Gallery we see you dis we see you display about correct me if i'm wrong around 3000 shoes right um four four, four. okay well i read three <laughs> <laughs> sorry sorry um so we see you display about 4000 shoes probably one of the most incredible collections i'm sure we've seen i personally didn't get to to check it out obviously you was you was only there for what three days it was only three days why so short cuz we was talking about it when we had lunch and i was like i wasn't able to even go like because you know what we I did that out of love. Right. For the love. Mm -hmm. We weren't making any money. Right. We, it, wasn't, it wasn't like some ploy to get you in. And, uh, mm -hmm. and it was some. literally just an experience. It was like, okay, I wanted to show off my collection. And then I was going to start selling a lot of it off. Mm -hmm. I was going to open up the, the vault section on the site, which, which I didn't because of uh, something that, that transpired after. But it was a pure just energy moment mm -hmm. and uh and i even had a, the, the builder that was there like totally fucked me in the end 
and he was dragging me for like two weeks. So he wasted two weeks and then tried Jeez. to up the cost and say, hey, it, I only have like four and a half days to build, so it's going to cost this much more. And I just told him, fuck you. I'll slap you if I see you. And and uh, that was it. I told my, my boy that I was like, dude, what kind of a dumb shit is this? Was this some fucking meth head? You know what I mean? Yeah. And uh, I actually had to put together all of our guys, and we're the, we actually like built the thing. And it Jeez. wasn't like shelving. Was it, it was floating. It was floating off the, from the ceiling. Mm -hmm. So we made the rafters come off the ceiling, and then so the whole reason it was there because that was an art gallery, known gallery, and next door to Supreme. And the whole purpose of this was I saw like everything was just turning into what it's worth. And not about like what it meant to you, like mm -hmm. the style. Are you? Did you like Penny Hardaway? Is that why you like all pennies? Was it your first shoe in high school or in middle school or whatever? Like what? What does something mean to you? So I was like, okay, let let me see if we can, if I can do this. No one's ever done that before. Like just put their whole like collection on display, and made it something like cool and not corny. Right. And so we did this whole back wall with PEs. I had Drake. Um, let us use some of his shoes for the, you know, for this, one of the centerpieces. So it had like the Anaconda threes and the Street Fighter threes and and stuff. Uh, so people could actually see them up close because no one really was able to at that point. Mm -hmm. And then I had like my Space Jams and stuff in my own center display, and um, and the back. And we had like Sunny Digital uh, spinning, um, and uh, and Eric Deluxe. Shout out to Eric, one of the yeah, OGs. Scam artists, you know, at all the clubs <laughs> and everything. And uh, out, out and shout out to Sonny Digital because, you know, he's he's like a great guy, good energy, um, you know, always came in and he was just like so down to down to do it. Right. And um, and it was a vibe. It was a crazy vibe. Like literally there's hundreds of people outside. It was packed inside. Heineken was uh, sponsoring it. The back room, the bar area was just like madness. Shout out to Pablo. He was back there. Um, going absolutely nuts. Um, it, it was just, it was crazy. Like my dad, uh, I think he's, that's when he first started getting dementia at that time. And, you know, he was actually the first time in my life hearing from him that he was like, I'm proud of you. Mm -hmm. So that was kind of like a, a big moment. It was, uh, it was, it was good. It was good energy, man. And that, that was like the, that was like the main thing that made me really happy. It was like, Everyone was there. They were just psyched. They were excited. It was a party. Nobody messed with anything. Oh, good, and it man. was and it was just it was packed. And you know, I didn't have uh, the money to like to you know keep it up. But now I I mean I wish it was uh, there longer. I've been asked to to do that again in another right. way. But um, I mean, you got to think about these days. There's all these people just trying to like steal and you know. There's a lot of darkness around that whole thing, yeah. and it's hard to it's hard to like do that and keep that there. Like, what do I got to do? Sleep there with a with an Uzi in one hand and a, yeah. you know what I mean? It's like crazy. It's like yeah. you gotta you gotta have a gun to protect your thing. You gotta kill other people right. that are trying to come at you to to steal shit. Yeah, it's and crazy. Couple, that was what like a couple million worth of worth of sneakers. I, I, I saw you mention at that at that time. Yeah. At that time. I mean, everything went up. That was 2015. Yeah, yeah. it was before like the crazy like market the jump. Yeah, yeah. yeah, spike, SB spike. Yeah. Like, yeah, it's insane. Dude. Yeah, so we'll take a little break and then we'll continue with part two in a bit. All right, we're back. A little water break. Back. All right, what do you we're want? <laughs> oh, sorry, sorry. Well, all right, um, Dre, um, we were talking about it the the day you came to the store. <clears throat> you mentioned you have a you have a retail store in Mexico City called Jet. How how did that come about? Like how you know what do you guys carry? Like you know obviously I, I even asked you I was like wait you you carry you have a retail store? I was like that's kind of crazy. Like, so yeah, yeah I'm uh, yeah I can involved in different uh, like different businesses too like in the art world and this and that. But uh, you know one of my biggest uh, passions is fashion, and uh, you know a friend of mine uh, contacted me and said hey. You know, we started this company and um, <clears throat> we're going to we want to sell uh, like brands and, cr and create this uh, this store in in Mexico City. Um, would you want to be involved? Because we have one partner that was going to come in and they couldn't connect what they wanted to. And I said, OK, what are you trying to do? And so when 
They told me what they were doing, and I said, well, I can bring all this. If you want to do this, I'm, I'm all in. Because I want to build up with these, with these like European brands and these Japanese brands and whatnot, these, these other ones. Oh. And so um, I came on board and, uh, yeah, I wanted to be on that, on that side of things, be a part of that, that business. And it was, it was really crazy um, getting all of these lines into a store that hasn't even been opened yet or built. It's like unheard of these days. Mm -hmm. So... Um, now Jet has three locations, uh, two in Mexico City, one in Mazarik in Polanco, one in um, Arcos Boscas, that's where the original one was. Well, the original one, it moved within the, the same uh, building, and then one in uh, Monterrey. Oh, nice. And, uh, and it's cool, and, you know, we have everything from Saint Laurent to Off-White to uh, Givenchy, Nike, Adidas, um, Bathing Ape, Visvim, um, you know, and a bunch of different uh, fashion lines. And it's the first of its kind for, for Mexico City uh, or, or Mexico in itself. There was, you know, other legendary uh, streetwear store like um, Headquarter. He carried some a couple of Japanese brands and stuff, but it was more so like on the streeter side and we were like more on the, the high end um, side over there. So is good it's 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 uh you know i'm kind of more so on the like the the marketing side of, of things or and the uh you know the buying and Curating and all that what's in there right things like but that. i've been like more more focused here on in la right now mm -hmm. because the uh, the partners are 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 great and amazing and they're they can they're handling the you know the whole operation and stuff but i've been having to uh literally here scale up the the baby blitz <laughs> yeah. over here so that's, that's the whole mission is opening up a, a store wow soon yeah hopefully this year we'll have the pro okay. the the blitz store open nice. but right excited now you can still that. go to projectblitz.com second, <laughs> very, second, very uh, excited for shameless that. plug on that <laughs> <laughs> no, i'm very excited for that because we even talked about it like um damn there's been so many times where i've heard the Yo, Dre's opening up a store and like, you know, yo, La Brea and all oh, this. And I'm like, yo, I'm hyped because I know I know this man's collection is is insane. Like, yeah. I, I know he's going to have like the wildest stuff in there. You know what I'm saying? And like, you know, I, I'm excited personally. I mean, you know, just to, to see exactly like what, what you're bringing in. Yeah. You know, that first uh, that first thing was like a, it was coming during a hard, hard time in my life. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's why you have to be you have to be able to, to admit, you know, I've always you know, usually everything I've done, you always succeed at. And that one, I kind of, uh, I, I failed. I just had too much, too much outside, uh, too much pressure around me with different things like, uh, you know, family illness and, um, you know, just a bunch of different things going on. And, and it was, uh, it was tough to, to navigate. And I had to, you know, you had to lose that battle so I uh, scrapped that entire project and, and moved on. And now we have like another one that's going to be coming up. So and then we relaunched the new Project Blitz uh, website. And, uh, you know, I, I just had to move on from a lot of things in the past and really just start everything fresh. And it's, so that's where we're where we're at right now. You mentioned a lot of um, a lot of things that you had to deal with. And I'm sure like, you know, that's the pressure, the anxiety, the the load, the heavy load you have on your back, things like that. Like, what helps you just kind of decompose and just like sit back and relax? Like, what's really you know helping you like get aligned again? Um, you know, it was a uh, it was a a lot of things. I think uh, you know, if you want to talk about like mental mental health, mm -hmm. I think I was always thinking hey, I am I'm always uh, strong, strong willed, strong minded. You could just you know, do anything, but I didn't realize like that you, I was just going, but there was still, you know, everybody ha has a point where they need to heal a little bit. When you're hesitating a lot, that means you have like something internal. You need to really figure it out. You know, all these other people, that's why people are stabbing each other, shooting each other for stupid ass reasons mm -hmm. and like losing it and breaking down. And it's like, you know, I guess you got to like figure it out before it gets to those kind of points. I mean, I don't think I would ever lose it, but you never know. I don't think you would, but hey, you never know. Yeah, you ne literally right? never know. But um, man, I'm a big big advocate of uh, psilocybin. 
like uh, like shrooms. Yeah. Microdosing that it was literally go. a major major key. You know, it was it literally was, you got so much balance and uh, and uh, you know working out and doing different things. I mean, uh, you just kind of finding all the things that you really that you really love and creating more of a balance in your life instead of just grinding out too much. Then I would like party to offset all that. Yeah, <laughs> you know what I mean. <laughs> Same. It was Chris like, like yeah. <laughs> I, just, I, just, I never really got lost in the sauce, yeah. but yeah, but but you gotta sometimes you just gotta go and let go. That's yeah. I was always telling everybody it's like, damn, what, do you ever sleep? And it's like, yeah, I sleep a few hours, dude. Sleep is for the week. Like boom, 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 boom. Yeah. But now I'm trying to get more of that sleep. Um, I think that's, I mean, health is like the main main thing. Yes, sir. So. But you gotta have a good time, and that's why uh, I don't know. Something told me to to come in and and contact you. So like you know, that's how we're all. No, yeah, I'm, no, glad, I I'm glad. You. Glad to yeah, see. No, glad to see um, everything going on here. It's it's like uh, it's great. It's amazing. No, I'm all for, for it. Yeah. Down, like, like knowing you, you know, for like, you, yeah, I know forever. It was yeah. like small. All, like, we was like 19, I mean, you were 20. never small. You were so <laughs> always like this. Well, I, what I consider small, yeah. you know. Yeah, so, yeah, but, yeah. Oh, man, yeah, I still there. remember the first time that um, I didn't even uh, work at Riff yet, and the first time I met you, he told me he's just like, "Hey, can you help me out? I gotta fucking pick up some shoes." Blah blah blah. T he took me down to the warehouse, and I remember I was like with a broken ankle. And, oh shit! Yeah, mm -hmm. and we picked up like a like how many shoes and a fucking uh, probably like a hundred give or uh, take. Uh, yeah. It was like fifty of each. Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah. And I, I was just like, I saw the whole operation, and I saw like everything, and I was just like, bro, this man is a madman. Like this is insane. <laughs> like, <laughs> but yeah, I literally, I still, I literally had a, like a, almost a full broken ankle. But I, I didn't know it was a broken ankle, but literally limping, carrying shoes. Yeah, yeah, is, yeah. Yeah, which is crazy. I know the cr the crazy thing is like, yeah, Manny, uh, you know, just bring it up, man. Uh, I'm glad you were you were. He saw like the uh, the beginnings. He saw like the. You know, I used to have stuff in my parents' garage, and like uh, under under tarps and all this like crazy oh, stuff. Oh, excuse me, we're, we're closed. Sorry about that. You're fine. Yeah, I was like, yeah. you got the key, DC? Sorry about this, Dre. It doesn't happen. No, no, it's all good. So yeah, no, the crazy thing is like you know when we saw, I saw you. Uh, and you brought up how you were there in the beginning, and that's that's like amazing. You know, when you see that, it's like coming from you start like in the bedrooms, start in a garage, then you just it's storages and warehouses. It's like that's kind of the progression of where where everything goes. Yeah, no, definitely inspiring for overall. Because when when um <clears throat> I think it was Ed that took me, and he was like, "Come on, let's go to Drake's crib real quick." Blah blah. And I was like, "All right." I seen tarp like a tarp going all the way down to your garage, and I was like. What in the world is this shit? Like, and you just had it out there, and I was just like going through everything. And obviously, you know, I was a kid; I was like 19, so I was touching everything. And I'm sure you're probably like, "What the fuck is this kid doing?" Right? But nah, it's 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 definitely inspiring to see, like, you know, from that to like to you know Project Blitz and like everything that you're doing now. So you know, we we definitely you know can say that you know you're one of the people that we definitely have looked up to and been like, "Damn!" Like, you know, if this man's able to, able to do it for this long, you know. Obviously, we hope to follow in these goddamn footsteps and shit. Well, that's the thing, you know. There's always a cycle in in uh, in this like business and industry or whatever. I think it's going through a, a cycle now, and you're gonna see a lot of people shut down that that either didn't know what they're doing, but most most of them you'll see that they they just couldn't they couldn't make what they were making, and they don't that to them it's not worth it anymore. Mm -hmm. That's the big that's the big thing. So you see, like you know. It's worth it to you guys because you know you you love this. Yeah, you grew up with it. Yeah, you know. No, it's like it's a, not it's a passion. It's yeah. a passion. Yeah, and that that's the thing. Sometimes there's a there's like these these points where you lose the, the you lose the passion and the joy out of it when you have like you know you know bad things happen and this and that. But when you find that joy again, that's literally the the driving force. No matter what yeah. what it is, like if you love dogs and you want to be a dog groomer. You know that's your your passion. Every day you get to pet new dogs and, yeah. and love it, right? Or you you really love love girls and you open up a strip club, like you know that's <laughs> like your passion. Every every day, you know what Jesus I mean. Whatever whatever Christ. it may be, that's yeah. like your your thing, right? Yeah. 
Yeah, it's like doing what you love because, like, same thing with me. Like, come here, I'm just like, I like seeing what's coming in on a daily basis. But for some people, it's like a job where they're just like, all right, what's next? But for mm-hmm. me, it's just like, oh, I want to see if somebody's going to bring something crazy, if we're going to get a cool piece of clothing today. So it's just like looking forward to, like, essentially something that I'm like very, very into. Yeah. Like, late, 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 I just got back from a trip and over there, I was just like, I was just tripping out because I was just like, yo, like, I came here very nice trip and i was just like all because of sneakers like sneakers paid for this trip like my passion for shoes paid for this and even like just like talking to people like i feel like it's a universal language like you see somebody with cool shoes you're like hey nice shoes you never know if good relationship sparks off oh yeah yeah no for sure yeah where'd you go uh spain barcelona and then ibiza for two nights (laughs) yeah literally party for five days straight i was fucking it's definitely one of my favorite places yeah. <laughs> I, love, I love that spot yeah yeah because yeah, we 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 notice you travel a lot yeah uh, i mean uh the, that was one of the I, I was like a big workaholic mm-hmm. for uh from you know most of my life and then when my mom passed in 2011 up until 2014 like i didn't go anywhere i didn't go to japan i didn't i didn't, just was like it was just so tied in, just grinding, 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 grinding. And then I went to the World Cup in Brazil, and then I ended up staying like six, seven weeks. It was insane. Fuck. And then I finally found like life again. And then I, I kind of wanted, then I was like going back to Japan and going all these places again. And, and so I kind of kept that, kept that going. It, it's good. It like it opens up, it bridges things. It's, uh, you know, sometimes you just can't have that fear of, of um stepping away yeah you know because the things open up i mean if i could i would if i could rem- like work remotely i would like literally like live off a plane for like two years and just be somewhere everywhere constantly but um you know there used to be a point where you could you know fly somewhere i literally was in athens athens greece and i walk into a Foot Locker, and it was and i'm talking about 2013 or something like that 2012 Forgive me for the dates. It was, um, wait, when was that? Oh, it was during this, uh, there was like a Damien Hurst thing going on. But anyways, it, there was literally South Beach LeBron 8s, originals sitting on the shelf. No way. Black Silver 5s. I think it was like 2010, something, somewhere <laughs> at this point, yeah, I believe. Right. And... Uh, yeah, so I was like, this is insane. How many of those do you have? Uh, I think we have like eight or something of them. I said, what? At retail, crazy. And it was just like these gold mines, right? <laughs> you know, 2009, I uh, was like, the the True Blue Threes were only in Europe. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I was out there, and me and my friend were just uh, having a good time. We kind of backpacked a little bit. Not really backpacked, but just like jumped on trains and partied everywhere. <laughs> and I was just going to all the foot lockers and shoe stores, buying the Jordan 3s and shipping them back at the post office. Everything I, I had there. They had 20, I had 10, and I would ship them. I remember I went into a foot locker in Milan, and these dudes were working in there. And I love this guy, man. He had, like, this deep uh, African accent. But he was, he was, like, literally amazing. When I told him, I said, I'll buy all of the 3s. No, they were just sitting there on the shelf, yeah. right? The, it was 2009. I remember it clear. And I said... I, I want to buy all of them. And it, they, they live off the commission. So imagine this dude was looking at me like, dude, God sent you to me right yeah. now. He was like, <laughs> wash. Uh, he said, let me clean the shoes and everything. And he was just like the whole time. Thank you. You're the, like God sent you here or something like that. It was, <laughs> it was, it was such an, a, like a, a cool moment. All right. And we were, I was just sending all this back and then sending a lot of it to like uh, Japan too, but also like in the States. And, you know, nobody was, there was, there was no one getting it. There's no, like, shady business, nothing like that. It was yeah. just purely being able to go around and go travel somewhere and find some place. And they had some stuff that's good for you and your area or whatever the case is. And, you know, now you forget it. Yeah, now it's just shit Dude, everywhere. you could go in the middle of Madagascar and there's whatever sneaker store is there. It's, it's a wrap. You're like, you know what I mean? Yeah, so yeah. You cannot go anywhere and find... Um, Find something that, that hasn't been touched. It's yeah. like impossible. There's no way. It's too big and too connected everywhere. It's too small. 
Yeah, I walked into like every store in Barcelona, and it was like the same shit that's sitting here, sitting over there. Mm -hmm. Like there was nothing like special anymore. Like yeah. it was just like, oh, all right. And like every reseller shop around in around there all had the same stuff. Same stuff, Jordan ones and mids, uh, Jordan fours. mids and Dunks fours, the same exact yeah. thing. It's all it's literally like the same carbon copy of each other, which yeah, is crazy. Yeah, yeah. Yep. yeah, but over there, just the prices are like a little bit higher. I would yeah, say. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Would you say you, um, cause I, I read on the Hypebeast interview you did like your, even go, going back to the no gallery thing, like you displayed a lot of shoes, but not everything was just expensive stuff. Like you like the variety, you like, you like all this stuff. Like I seen you even mention like some Adidas, like snakeskin Adidas. And I was just like, I've never seen those by the way, random shit. Right. Mm. But, um, do you think you're, you're more into that? Cause obviously he talks about like the mids, the fours, the dunks, like every store having the same shit, like. Are you are you big on like curating this? Because you talk about Project Blitz, right? And we look at the collection you have, and it's and it's just a wide variety of stuff. Like there was one video where I still seen like double tap vans, and I was like, yeah. "How does this man still have double tap vans? Like, why do you, you know, what I'm saying like?" But do you think you still have a love for just like all sorts of shoes? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, like I said, I have I have pictures of me as a kid, like you know, wearing Converse, Vans, like uh, you know, all kinds of stuff. I was just into sneakers themselves. Obviously, like Nike was my my brand, my favorite, whatnot. But I think that it's important for people to like other stuff and not just the same thing. I think it's important for for Nike and Jordan that people like other brands too, because what happens is what's happening. You know, when you only like one brand, it just starts getting more like a like a an hourglass, like a like a funnel. They just start getting less and less and less interested in other things and only becomes in the same things. And then, you know, boom. So it's like if people start getting into runners and ASICs and all that stuff, then they're into Air Maxes and things like that. Mm -hmm. If they're into, um, you know, tech shoes then they're into like NMDs and Ultra Boosts and, and um, you know, uh, vapor maxes and all that stuff but when people start losing interest in all that they start losing interest in that style you know what i mean yeah mm -hmm. and i think that that that's it's important to have like you know people into all kinds of different stuff otherwise they're all wearing the same thing again it's great to see like new balance you know have have some energy and and back in and and um uh, you know i think for me that's that's it's important i like all different kind of um I like all different kind of uh, sneakers, you know? Mm -hmm. It's hard to start a sneaker company. I've seen a lot of people do it, and, uh, you know, some of them made it for a while, and then, and then others went away. But, I mean, this is, like, literally, you know, it's, it's, it's tough. I mean, what, it, what, is, what do you see the least? Like, Puma and... Puma, but Reebok. The, but imagine how, how big of a name Puma is. But, yeah. like, right. I mean, I don't even, I don't even have a, a damn. I, I had maybe, like, two... Pumas in my entire life with really? fat laces and yeah. shit going to like, <laughs> you know, hip hop bars and stuff back back in the day or whatever, right? Yeah. But I mean, that they just kind of like disappeared a little bit, you know? Yeah, I think like right now they're reaching for like the youth with Lamelo. Mm -hmm. Lamelo Ball has like his signature basketball shoe, and mm -hmm. I, I see a lot of kids. I go to play basketball, and every kid that's like pre twenty is wearing Lamelo Ball shoes. Really? They, yeah, like. They they love them. Oh, that's crazy. So yeah. that's good. Okay, well that's, but that's cool. Like that's good, good for to hear. them. That, <laughs> that's good info. Yeah, because I was just like, like I I go hoop at LA Fitness or even like I play in the league and every, every any kid that's twenty years old is wearing a Lamelo ball, which is crazy. Really? Yeah. I mean that's that's actually good to see because, you know, competition only drives innovation. Yeah. And uh, I think that, you know, when that that's like a, a healthy, symbiotic relationship. It's like you have to. You gotta have um, you gotta have guys doing something different. Like even in our space, you gotta have someone doing something different. So it drives you to kind of do something more different too, and kind of keep up and be up. And you could be friends and stuff with it. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I'm sure there's there's friends within different of these uh, footwear companies. I'm sure. And you know, they, people see things and then they they kind of like they get inspired by something and they'll they'll kind of do something that similar to it or whatever you know and i think that that's that's important when it all becomes like one-sided then it's it it gets boring you yeah. know what i mean yeah i feel like when i got into shoes um there was always a big variety of it 
Like yeah. it was just like people were into like new, even like New Balance had cool colorways of stuff. Um, Puma was good. Uh, Reebok, everybody was doing like A Life was doing all the collabs with mm-hmm. like the neons and stuff like that. So when like when we get like to 2016, 17, and then it's all becoming just like a Jordan one. Like that's all people wanted, but it it gets boring. And I feel like when people come in here, they see a little bit of everything, and they're just like, oh shit, you guys have a good variety, but even like buying shoes that I know are not going to sell, but I think they're cool. Like this guy brought, um, what co- colorway was it? Um, the Seattle Sonics colorway of the undefeated Vans. Um, and then, uh, what was it? The Supreme half cab. Yeah. I think we still have it downstairs, but I told the guy, I'm like, bro, I'll give you a hundred dollars for Which each. half cab? The, the Supreme with purple the with the orange. With the orange. Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I think it might've been the first half cab. Oh, yeah. Second, the first one was the checkers. Oh yeah, Damn. So, he's like he's like I got memory of that. No, no, I, I love because I love those a lot. But I remember. <laughs> but yeah, I remember the guy brought him in, and it was like this like older cat, and he was just like, "Yo, I found out about you guys, big fan, blah blah blah." blah. And he's like, "But I have old shit," and I was like, "Oh, check it out, bring it in." And he had those two, and I was just like, "You know what, bro? I'll give you a hundred dollars. Like, we'll put them for one forty, see if they sell. If they don't sell, maybe some kid is gonna feel the same feeling I felt when you brought them in. Yeah, yeah, maybe yeah. buy them. Um." And super crispy, not yellowed or anything, but I was just like, ah, if it doesn't sell, it's cool. It's a cool picture. It's cool to have. It's just a good memory for me. And I th- and we still have the stupid half caps. <laughs> <laughs> oh, really? Yeah. Yeah. How long is it been? Yeah. Now? Yeah. Downstairs, like... It- the purple with orange? Yeah. yeah. Oh, he's busting good. them out right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember there was a, there was a teal and yeah. red, purple and orange. Thank you, Pop. Yeah. But I remember these, yeah. So, yeah, there was teal, teal red, purple, orange... Fuck, what was the other ones? Yeah, because I remember... There's was another one. There was three. It was purple orange? That, that one, the one with the red and... The, the teal. teal. Teal, red, purple, orange. Was it, something else? was it just black and blue? Black and blue. Black and blue. Black, and, black, and, blue? black and blue? Yeah. I thought it was black and blue. I think it was like a black and like... There a, had to have been a black a, one. A super like royal like Dodger blue. Like very... It popped a lot. I, if I don't know. I, well, I guess we're going to have to... Yeah. We're going to have to look it up right now. Um... Damn, That's Supreme. Crazy, we were man. talking about we were talking about Supreme, right? And um, when you came in, and you're like, "Is Supreme dead?" I was like, "Come on, we can't say that. I was like, we still wear that shit." And you're like, "All right, all right." Um, so that kind of leads to my next question. You still have you still you still getting off a lot of Supreme? Like, obviously, we know that you had some like yeah. some of the rare shit. Like, you know, what I'm saying, like, yeah, of course. I mean, obviously, I was just joking and trying to see what you were gonna say. <laughs> but I, I mean, like stand my ground. I was like, not for not. Nelson's but you, gonna get mad if I say yeah. I'm glad. I'm well. I'm glad the way you answered because like um, if. If you want, then then they're just a fucking poser, you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> like, dude, that that literally is what um, it it boosted uh, sneakers, it boosted SB, um, it bridged the US with Japan because Japan blew uh, Supreme blew up in Japan. Mm-hmm. That's what like drove that, right. right? They made all the you know all those collabs and stuff that literally would drove that throughout the entire. Um, industry that's what spawned all these other all these other brands and ideas the kith right. and this and that right yeah. Yeah. like uh to to do these collaborations that nobody would ever flipping logos cease and desist that is like what streetwear was yeah right. you know what i mean that's what it's all about flipping your logos you know yeah, you have to yeah. you know yeah. just like oh we do it all the time we do yeah. it all the time like until we get yeah. in trouble. Yeah, I mean, I mean <laughs> I even have, we have like I literally another thing I ha- didn't launch that I didn't need to is like our Blitz brand, and yeah. we still have tons of designs, and we have things produced that we didn't even pump out yet. Yeah. But literally, it's all it's it. That's what that's what it was. It's paying uh, homage to all the things that you kind of liked, you grew up with. That's what that's what uh, Supreme was about. It's mm-hmm. about like the time of that that those middle '90s, and um, you know. They still sell out the f- out the front door, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? Hundreds of millions. Yeah. So when when you know, and it's weird that you know you see that with some of the the major media on these side of things, they say like uh, like Supreme is that is just because there's not a bunch of resellers running out to go get it. Yeah. Right, right, right. Uh, yeah. Like it was. Um, you know, I still have a huge archive. Um, you know, you you kind of pick and choose pieces but we still have people that are all about it but you know like dude style shifts all the time when those things were coming out that was like 
um, 06, 07, I think, probably. Little raw denim shit. Yeah. Wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. it's like... And, it had to be. I'm like, where's the fuck? And, uh, like and, and that was the time of a big, like, lull in yeah. Supreme. It was hard, it was hard to, uh, to move in itself. I mean, just a couple years later, they had the Damien Hurst box logo to you. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Bro, I had those things for like 80 bucks 85 dollars and nobody would nobody would buy them everyone hated the the thing on the back now they're you know still going for 1500 we just sold one uh, a couple weeks ago it's crazy a month um, ago too or something like that but still like so streetwear um so that's the best streetwear brand you think off rip what do you mean of off time all time legendary yeah yeah yeah, I, I think so too. I mean, yeah, there you go. I yeah. mean we, we need that solidify. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, you think about it; it's like literally how how, how versatile is it? Yeah, you how know, from we, making cardigans and all kinds of stuff to to just flipping logos and tees and hats. You got like Bape, yeah, but it was so like short-lived. recycled. Yeah. Right, right. Yeah. I mean, it goes through like you know the same things again. But if you think about it in the beginning in the '90s, like what what it was, it was, it was like the camo hoodies, tees, hats. The the babes does, mm-hmm. I mean those were cracking. Those were like insane. Yeah, you know that that changed. That forced Nike to make um, patent leather Air Force Ones, like Easters and all that stuff yeah. at that time. Like, oh, which ended like up that? being way better quality than the babes does. Yeah. Oh yeah, of course. Which yeah. was which was sick, you know. But that's that's what I'm saying. You see that in the thing I brought up, the innovation. It's yeah. like okay, they're doing this. It's kind of similar to us. They can't sell it here in the U.S., but they're selling it outside, and it's still making noise so w- let's take what they are copying in its in its way and and do it ourselves and they did and brought a lot of energy to air forces at that time yeah the mid 2000s like those are all hard still you know yeah like one of my homies um he's from canada but he's like a big supreme fan and mm-hmm. just like a old like older streetwear guy and he said he was in New York this past week, and he was just like, it was the first time I was able to walk into Supreme since, like, 2013, which is crazy. Just walk in, no line, no nothing. And for him, he was hyped because, like, I could get my basic necessities that I want, like the boxers and stuff yeah, like yeah. that. And I don't have to deal with this fucking long line of resellers. Mm-hmm. So he was hyped. But, yeah, I think it's cool for now. Like, I, I tell these guys all the time, it was like, if something cool is coming out, I don't have to worry about paying somebody extra or nothing right now. I just walk into the store grab it if somebody's at the store i'm like hey just check if they have these or this and my size and i'll be like bet i'll bring it they and they don't even charge you right now so let me ask you something do you like that more or as a business owner would you rather see Ooh. that hype come back um i would say it's 50 50 but right now i think where i'm at with like clothes and i believe in shoes more um i'd rather just be able to walk in and get it let me ask you something let me ask you something. Yeah. Please. Have you ever, have you ever like, did, have you worn like Yeezy 2s and Yeezy 1s? Yeezy 2s? Ever? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I have, yeah. Right? Have you ever had somebody that you hear, you know, like, you know, they're talking loud on purpose and they're like, yeah, look at this fool wearing these fake ass Yeezys and things <laughs> like that? Did you ever have that? No. I've had that happen before. To Where? you? Yeah. <laughs> Where? Where? I mean, I don't know. I can't remember the situation. Just somewhere like Hollywood or something, and some fool is like, "Oh yeah, this fool doesn't know what's up. He's wearing fakies." I just kind of looked and smiled, like, "Yo, yeah. this fool's <laughs> out of his mind." He's like, "This guy doesn't know who I am." I mean, not just that, <laughs> just but like, you know, like, you. like they're absolutely like real. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. But that's what I'm. That it was kind of like uh, when you're. I was talking about like the Supreme stuff. Um, there's so many like posers and people that are like they, they jump on, they think they know shit, and they're the first to talk shit. Yeah. Oh yeah, for sure. You know what I mean? Absolutely. They're the first to talk shit. Like, yo, is that is that is that T real or things like that? But they don't know shit. Right, yeah. right. Right? It's like the people that have like little to, to like that little to no knowledge that is just like, oh, I read one thing about Supreme, so therefore I can just tell that's a fake shirt or those are fake easies, you know what I'm saying? And people that have no no idea, no clue. Yeah. They're quick to like run and and talk nonsense yeah right? of course yeah. i feel like that 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 comes with it right that comes with the territory of like being that you know what i'm saying i'm sure even you know I, I, it just comes with it i feel yeah. like nowadays it's 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 always going to be those guys that that we could kind of see you know come in and then come out right like i think that's one thing that me that bris for sure has said and like i think we've talked about is it's very we're very longevity you know we're like we we've thought about like this shit forever like mm-hmm. we didn't want to just be hot for a fucking year or two and 
And then now it's like, oh shit, like, well, you're gone. Like, you know, it's like, okay, we don't hear from you again. Like, you don't, you don't do X, Y, Z. It's like, it, it sucks, but it's like, I don't know. I think it's funny to see those people who come into, like, I guess our space, really. And yeah. Try and talk shit and, yeah. you know, th- do things like that. No, I know. It's crazy. It's, yeah. it's crazy. The fake like, shoe happened to me with the Dior's. I wore my Dior low at Coachella. <laughs> Really? And, yeah. Wow, you're savage. Yeah, yeah. For people, it's crazy. I, I did it for the second year in a row this past year, and everybody was just like, Rap. reps, fake, blah, blah, blah. Oh, you could hear them? Yeah. No, no, no. no. Like in the comments. In the comments, you did a TikTok about it, and oh, all really? the comments are like, fake, <laughs> rep, blah, blah, blah. But it was funny because like when Dior's came out, I was very lucky to have access to them, which was insane. Like I got a set for retail. And then one of my other friends, he hit me out of nowhere, and he's just like, "Hey, this guy." You got a pick- set for retail? Yeah. I, how? I got multiple <laughs> sets for retail. How? I don't. I don't know how. He said how? Yeah, I know. So <laughs> at first, I had done favors for somebody high up there, and then he was just like, "Hey, I'm gonna hold you down with one. What do you want?" And I was just like, "Whatever, whatever. I don't care. Whatever you want." So I picked up the high. He got me the high my size. And then he took me to the like room where they had the whole collection. I bought a couple pieces just like as a thank you. I mm-hmm. didn't really care for the pieces in reality, like the clothing. But I was just like, oh, just thank you. I'm going to make it worth your while. I'm going to buy certain things. Mm-hmm. And then out of nowhere, he hits me up and he was just like, yo, like, do you want the low? And I was just like, yeah, sure. Like, what do I need to do? And he was just like, just come to the store right now in Soho. Ran to the store, put my card. In New York. In New York. Then out of nowhere, he hits me up again. And he was just like, hey, man, you want? another set and i was just like what the fuck and i was just like all right bet <laughs> crazy yeah, yeah and then Ew. even in um at round two a couple pairs came in when i used to work there in new york and i think i bought them for like kind of low like at that point because they were going for like 12 i bought them for six grand each but in new york for round two's market i knew they weren't gonna we couldn't sell a ten thousand dollar shoe like I just, we didn't have that market for round two. Our clientele was like the steals and the deals and stuff yeah, like yeah. that. So I remember I told the man, well, my assistant manager at that time, I was just like, yo, I'm gonna go to my apartment right now and I'm gonna bring a ton of trades to get this other set. And so I ran to my apartment, loaded up a ton of Ikea bags, ran back to the store, brought back like pretty decent shit and I ended up keeping those. And then we ended up opening with what? Like eight, eight pairs of Dior's here. Wow. Yeah. Yes, sir. But yeah, it was just like random, like little place like that where I was just like, all right, I'm gonna buy this first with the round two money, and then I'm gonna give round two their money back with a bunch of product. But the ones for um for retail, I was just shocked, like that this guy was hitting me up, and he was just like, hey, like you want to pick up a couple more pairs? And then I went to Paris last year, and I have a really good friend there, and then he was just like, hey, I have a gift for you, and he literally he's just like, don't open it right now. He put it in my backpack, and he's like, open it when you get home. And then I pulled it out and it's a fucking pair of the oars. Wow. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Got a lot What'd of you do for those. that guy? <laughs> <laughs> no, I just, uh, Union Ones came out, which is crazy. It was just uh-huh. sneakers. I used to follow him uh-huh. like 2016, 17 on Instagram. And randomly when the Union Ones came out, he hit me up and he was just like, hey, like, do you have access to this shoe? And I was just like, yeah, bro, easy. What, like, what do you want? And he's just like, can you just grab me one pair? So I got the shoes, I got them for retail, and I just shipped them both. I was just like, you know what? This guy seems like a cool dude. I kind of know what he does. Um, I shipped him the shoes. So then he asked me to do his boss a favor. And I was just like, all right, cool. I'll, I'll do him the favor. What does he want? He's just like, um, he wants um, a pair of baby 85 Chicago's and a pair of Chicago's for himself. And I was just like, all right, like, what does he want to pay? And then he was just like like two grand, and this is at this point is when round two used to have all the eighty fives, and we were getting them for cheap. So same thing, I got them at cost, and I was just like, you know what, I'm gonna just ship them to you, and then we'll figure it out. So that whole relationship was just build off shoes, and then when he gave me the Dior, I was just like, damn, this guy's crazy. Wow, like, that's yeah. crazy. Yeah. That's super cool. Yeah. I mean, I love I love those stories because like uh, that's that's literally the the beauty of it. It's kind of like the uh, the you know the relationships and it yeah. all comes down to like sneakers you know no yeah Come always on. like 
it, it's just always crazy like how I thought you were going to I thought it was going to be some sexual thing no, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> I was like waiting for it yeah, I was like yeah what did you do that guy shoes. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. 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 Mad no, nice. no. and then even um the the associate at um at Dior I ended up giving him a pair of Union ones cuz I had like for myself, I think I like 35 pairs of Union Ones, mm-hmm. and then for Christmas, I pulled up on him, and I was just like, here, bro, this is all you. Thank you so much. Yeah, yeah. Because to me, I was just like, fuck it, I spent 400 on this Union at resale, and now they're going for like a rack. Mm-hmm. He's going to appreciate that favor. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and then even when we opened here, he came before opening, he bought a pair of Fragment Ones from us, too, and I was like, all right, bet. Oh, sick. Cool, dude. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's yeah. great. I mean, I I love that. Yeah, I was just joking about yeah. that thing, but, you know. He's like, I promise. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no, that's great. I mean, I, I love that. I love that. Um, what's it called? You mentioned uh, during the break that like somebody's that people have mistaken you for uh, Nick Diamond. Does that happen? That happens often. Yeah, hap- uh, I mean, <laughs> happens a lot. I mean, <laughs> the funny thing is, uh, people. There's a lot of guys that come up to me and they're like, "Yo," and then they're like showing me their diamond oh, shirt. I was like, what they showing you? <laughs> and then <laughs> what they showing you? Bro? Yeah, yeah, like- no, no, it's funny. And then, um, but. A lot of times he has like girls come up to him mm-hmm. and think they're me, he, that he's me. Son. And I'm like, okay, bet. I mean, I got guys <laughs> coming to you, you got girls coming up to you. I mean, that's that's kind of funny. Oh, but uh, yeah, and then I, I think he told me a story like one time he was at some pool party and some uh, rapper dude com- comes up and uh, I, I don't want to say w- which one, but he, and he was with another guy and they were like, yo, What's up? How you been? Da, da, da. And he was like, good, good, good. And he's like, yo, we gotta come through. And he's like, yeah, come through. He's like, dude, I wanna get these sneakers and this and that. And he's oh like, Lord. and he's like, fuck, they think I'm Dre right now. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I, you know, that that's always that's always like a funny uh, a thing. I think we we kind of played a joke on Instagram a long time ago. I, I think I posted that thing too in Vegas or something. But um, yeah, that's why I was like, dude, I gotta grow a beard or something to, to differentiate. differentiate I mean, it literally, just happened. Like, uh, was it a couple? Uh, where was it at? Um, it was somewhere in Hollywood. Uh, oh, it was after a towel. Literally, just like uh, I just came back from Europe a couple weeks ago, and this dude outside. We were talking to these other guys, and the guy comes up, he goes, "Nikki," and I'm like, "Oh," I was like, "Nah, dude." It's f- it like it's hilarious though, but I mean, yeah, I mean, it it, it happens. But uh, I don't know. I guess we look like cousins or something. Yeah. How long have you guys? How long have you known him for? Since uh, I don't know, maybe oh two, oh three, or something like wow. that. So like, okay. yeah, twenty years. Jeez, yeah. crazy, it's right? It's been a minute for sure, for sure. Yeah, it's funny you say that because people confuse me in DC. No, we still don't get it to this day. Since we was at Riv, bro, he made a customer believe that me and him were the same person, <laughs> and I was at the counter talking to this Swear customer. To God, yeah, and. I went to the back, and this guy thinks that me and him are the same person. Bro. And wow, then, that's so crazy. I went to the back, and then he popped out, but, like, without knowing. And then the guy just kind of, like, was looking like, what what happened to your beard, like, instantly? Really? And, yeah. And I was just like, and this guy fully believed that me and him were the same person. <laughs> we was at risk, I mean, bro. you probably look, like, 15%. Uh, Bro, the same. it's the just most, like the eyes, nose, and the the mouth. But it's like, the most it's confusing. The whole thing. face. What are, I mean, how, he said how, the whole face. <laughs> There's the eyes, nose, and the I mouth. Mean, no, no, no. But but you know what I'm saying? Like, yo, that's like saying you and you guys look alike. Come on. But but you know what I mean? Like, what are you gonna go back and go outside and shave? And Bro, that was the most hilarious thing because this this it was an older guy. He was right there and out of nowhere I go to the back fully bearded and then he comes out fully shaved and the guys you could just see it in his face on the camera that he was so confused Stunned. of what happened like that's funny <laughs> oh my god I still don't get it like I know you like you and Nick I get it you know like hey, looking alike but me and DC like, we never I never I, was, I never understood that that's funny that's hilarious actually <laughs> right. so what's next for Project Blitz what are we what are we looking forward to um uh, so we're gonna be opening up the 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 store soon. We're um, really revamping the the new site as well, opening up new uh, doors on there. They're, we're gonna finally open up a lot of the vault product on there. So you'll see some uh, crazy stuff on there. Uh, that's all gonna be going down right now. Okay. Um, and by fourth quarter, I mean I hope we have. Uh, that store potentially open, but if not, like, uh, you know, beginning of next year. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> uh, we're also, we're going to be doing some stuff. I think we're going to be working on something with uh, 
uh, kind of weird since we're talking about Supreme doing some big like uh, Supreme type event because like we have a huge archive. Um, but um, I think there's just going to be a lot of a lot of stuff, a lot of like a deeper pr uh, product, new product that you see on ProjectBlitz.com. You know, <laughs> shameless plug number three. <laughs> Um, Make sure I'll check the website out. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I mean, the, you know, the whole move is now just to to really be able to grow, and me being able to finally focus a lot and not have so many outside uh, pressure and forces like kind of weighing you down. So, I think that um, you know, this year, towards the end of this year, you're going to see. Uh, a, a lot going on and and then in the next year as well and i'm also going to be working on something that will be like creating a lot of community okay. especially with you guys and 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 everyone in in yeah. the space very you know? excited to yeah. see that so, i know you mentioned it when we was having lunch and like and very excited and like we talked about you know like the the whole retrospective event i mean mm -hmm. it it's something to kind of do again while uh you know you still have some of those pieces right you know yeah. So, I mean, we'll see. But it always has to be kind of bigger and badder than the, than the first. Right. Because you don't want it to be like those shitty movies that come out and the first one's always better. The sequel doesn't, like, live up to the expectations. No, you got you to gotta make the sequel better. Yeah. So, right. like, you know, like ComplexCon. Like, we did a, a sick ComplexCon. Yeah. But the sequel was way, f way more fire, right? Yeah. Like, the yeah, ramp and everything. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, if you did retrospective like that, I got to do something that's going to, like... You know, really, you know, step it up. Yeah. So I, I don't want to be like uh, mundane and, but uh, you know, you have to figure it out. It costs it costs a lot to do these things. Yeah. No, but, absolutely. Yeah. And hopefully you guys will be there at this one. Yeah. No, we'll, we'll, uh, we we'll hope so. Out. Um, are we? Sorry about that. Are we able to? Are we able to go down to this warehouse and maybe do a little vlog if you have some time? Of course. Obviously, obviously, I know you're you're busy and you know busy schedule and all that. But if you ever have time. Rob and, and, and all the guys, we'd love to go down there. And, you know, Rob was just like, yo, ask him if we could, uh, you know, give a little tour. You know, I just, I love when he does the tours. I was like, yeah, yeah, I was like, I'll ask him. I was like, you know. No, no, so no, yeah, we, time, we, can, we can definitely set it up. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, yeah, you yeah, know, man. appreciate you for coming. It's been a while down, since uh, you've yeah. been down too. Like a lot, a lot has changed. So, yeah. yeah. One last question. Who's your favorite uh, Croatian soccer player ever? <laughs> Oh wow! Of all time, like your Dude, favorite, like Luka Modric, number one. Luka Modric, yeah. Like uh, he's he's a uh, a legend. Like, but but off the, I I was lucky to finally uh, be able to to meet him. I mean, imagine he's like he's like a few years younger than me. But ever since I was like, um, you know, early twenties, uh, seeing him as a teenager. You know, come up the ranks uh, from Dinamo Zagreb, and then you know they're going to the World Cup in in um, in Korea, Japan, in 02. Yeah, um, it kind of like got bounced a little bit early um, at that time, but you know he was still like coming up. But he's just such a good, good-hearted person, good energy, just like off the off the pitch. Yeah, and that's that's like amazing to just always be humbled and and grounded. You know, and that's that's sort of you know, I try to do is just, you know, you, you want to be, I mean, something my dad instilled and I'm pretty sure that he probably had the, the same thing is like, you don't treat anyone, uh, beneath you. Yeah. When you same. start treating people beneath you, like people at restaurants serving you or this or that, or like you walk into a store and act like you own the place. But I'm sure you've probably dealt with that. People yeah. that are assholes and they yeah. treat the guys that work, work for you. Like they're nothing. Yeah. Like that's insane. And there's like athletes and rappers that act like that too, you know. Yeah, it's like you time. wouldn't be where you at without these people. Exactly. No, you know, yeah. don't think that your shoe. You know, some people that own brands or whatever, and they're like, "Oh, I don't like reselling and all this stuff." It's like, yo, the whole reason why your brand is up is because of that. Yeah. And if it wasn't, nobody would care. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you got. It's either you, you, you have to embrace those things in that way. But without going on a tangent, like Lucas. You know, just amazing on and off the pitch, and that's kind of like what I want to do is always be like uh, good at what I do, but also um, you know good outside of that. Yeah. You know, so I always try to be cool and and uh, 
and try to be as humble and 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 connected connected and and into like what what others are doing around me because like one of the big things is like if you honestly can't be happy if you can't be happy for someone you've known what no doesn't matter how close you are or not or even someone that's close to you if you are can't be happy for someone doing something and like succeeding at it but inside you're like like i'll fuck them or something yeah. like that like that's crazy Mm -hmm. Like if everyone was able to be happy for their friend or someone they knew or someone like, oh man, that's great that they're that you know they they started that up and and did that, like that's the most important important thing you know. Yeah. But there's a lot of people that are just like, oh, uh, oh damn, I, I gotta I gotta beat that or this and that you know. Yeah. That and and nature. Yeah. Yeah, and I'm I mean, you know that I'm sure that happens in, that happens in athletics too you know. Yeah. Like people will try to hold you down if you're not aligned with them, you know. So, yeah. but uh, but yeah, that's a great answer. Yeah, Lu <laughs> Lucas, Lucas the goat, man. Yeah. Uh, he's definitely he's yeah. he's dope. Yeah, one of my favorites is uh, Ivan Perisic. That's like I love him. I think oh, he's dude, a, yeah, Ivan. Uh, yeah. Lucky, like you know, he's he's my boy too, man. Yeah. He's he's super cool. Yeah. Um, really nice dude. I met him when we were he was playing in Milan. Uh, went to the game, went to go like eat after, and you know that's the cool thing is like the connectivity yeah. is, is the is sneakers too. Oh, you know, that's a, yeah. like everyone they like Yvonne definitely was liking all a bunch of different sneakers and stuff, and um, you know we got Luca a pair of uh, Dunks too. Oh, so nice. it, that's that's kind of uh, that's cool. Like that whole bridge, like connecting also like sports with like fashion and sneakers and style and all that. And, you know, you didn't really always see that back in the day, like you do now. And that's, yeah. that's like a beautiful thing. Sick. But Yvonne's amazing. He was like a incredible at the, at the, uh, the semifinal and the yeah. final right now, just in uh, Rotterdam. Yeah. I mean, he was playing like back, but he was running up and down the, the field, like a thoroughbred, just, yeah. you know, just grinding, you know? Yeah. He was for me. It was like he was killing it. He was killing it. It's sad. I wish we would have won that, yeah. that, uh, that game. But you know, that's PKs, man. It all comes down to the end, right? Exactly. But yeah, oh that's God. a good way to let it go. Oh thank God. you guys for tuning in. Make yes, sure to sir. follow Croatian Style and Project Blitz. Yes, and thank you for coming down, <laughs> making some time for us. You know, obviously we've known you for X amount of years, and like you know, just seeing you grow and like things like that, it sh shit means a lot. So, you know, like I said, do do thank you a lot for coming down and we appreciate you for, you know, coming down and no, of course, bro, spending of course. some time with us and, and, and answering some little questions. Absolutely. Uh, thank you. You know, I, I love it. And I hope whatever I you know brought to you brought a little energy to the. Yeah. Thank you. Absolutely. To the show. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah.